The title contained the word courage. And as I continued to think about the work that her and I did together, about so many synchronicities that led up to her transition, I found myself thinking about how important the word courage is now more than ever. Her word is not only helping me move through her tragedy, but it's also helping me move through the tragedies that have been taking place back to back to back. Last week, I talked about developing the courage to take action and cleanse ourselves from any limiting beliefs or any energy that is holding us back from embodying our full self because it is our full self that is going to push us through what we are going through now as a community, as a collective energy, as we watch hate penetrate our daily lives. I want you to take a moment to take a deep breath. Because this isn't a sad episode, even though it might feel that way, it it, it isn't that at all. It's really an episode where we're going to dig deeper into mobilizing. This has been consuming me heavily for a while now, but it's obviously amplified within the last seven days. Sean King launched a movement called Flip the Senate. The single most important task we have ahead of us is to flip the Senate, even more so important than getting Trump out of office. How to Flip the Senate is an organization that is hyper-focused on vetting potential candidates for office and getting aligned on the messaging and what it is that our communities need, as well as standing behind the potential candidates. It is so important for us to focus on unifying our messaging and standing behind key people in each area. This is going to help us take the guesswork out of what we are trying to accomplish. I'm going to link the information to that movement in the description of this episode. Chris Broussard, who is a sports journalist, said something that was really important. And instead of me trying to regurgitate what he said, I just want you to listen to it. They're calling it the Rich Paul rule, which is appropriate, but I'm going to call it something else. Straight up racism. But instead of crying, complaining, and begging, it's time for black people to take action. You fight power with power. And one of our greatest sources of power is our athletic dominance. So I'm calling on all of our great black football and basketball players. Instead of going to these big universities that chew you up, spit you out, and don't care about you, go to an HBCU, a Howard, Morehouse, Hampton, Xavier of New Orleans, and many other schools. I know some of them are still NCAA, but at least the millions of dollars you generate would go to benefiting black people who are in dire need of economic empowerment. Secondly, our professional athletes, instead of giving two, three million dollar donations to these big schools that you stayed at for a year or two, give it to an HBCU, then they could strengthen their academic program and their athletic programs and facilities. As I processed the message that he was giving, I started to think, what power do we hold in the Latinx community that we can really utilize and stand in fighting power with power? And as this question was bothering me and I was trying to come up with the answer, I did start to get this whisper of, it's money. It's money. This country is controlled by five very wealthy, powerful families who have been able to amass so much wealth. It's not controlled by Donald Trump, which got me thinking. It's financial literacy. I seriously cannot get off the money tip. It keeps haunting me. And now that I'm receiving all of these other downloads, I can understand why. 
It is all coming together, fighting power with power. It is imperative that we begin developing our generational wealth. It doesn't matter what level we are at. It's important for us to start looking at our credit scores. It's important for us to start consuming books. It's important for us to start reading. It is important for us to understand the way money works. Because this is the only way we will be able to come into position of power so that we can turn around and invest in our own communities, in our own people, but also to have a voice and to infiltrate great wealth and great power. And I might not be able to see it in my lifetime, but I hope that I raise Benicio so financially literate that he will be able to infiltrate. And even just saying that, there is a part of me that cringes because we have been taught that both money and power are extremely evil. And of course, it can be, but it also has the potential to not be. It also has the potential to liberate and to create change. Because I've never been a money person, because I've always dreaded looking at my finances, it is so hard for me to understand the changes that are taking place within me now. I'm consuming anywhere from 10 to 15 hours a day of financial literature. And what I am beginning to understand is that this is going to be the most crucial component to my spiritual development and everything that I teach on this podcast from my perspective. It is so much more important important that we become financially literate above and beyond going to college. Financial literacy should be as important as learning how to write and read English. Because even if you go and obtain a really nice education and you're one of the lucky persons that lands a high paying job, if you don't have financial literacy, that high paying job doesn't count for shit. We are a culture of high consumerism and bringing in more money most of the time for people means spending more money. It means more debt. The only way out of what we're facing right now is to understand the way money works and to get our coins up, to get our bags up, to get our accounts up. That is the only way. And so as I was listening to Chris Broussard say, we fight power with power. There was something inside me that moved. It was like I was on to something, like I could smell it, like I could taste it. And I realized that it is the statistics on Latina entrepreneurs. There was a report that was released in 2017 by Stacy the Armas. Big shout out to to Stacy the Armas. By the way, her last name gives me the chills with the reports and all of the information that she is pushing out to the Latinx community. She has definitely given us the armas that we need in order to fight. I've used this Latina 2.0 report to craft all of my decks for Let There Be Lose. Anytime I make a pitch, it consists of all of the information from this report. I'm going to go ahead and link that Nielsen report in the description of this episode as well. I've talked about this a couple of times before on the podcast, but I think we really need a refresher of the Latina entrepreneurship boom because I want to remind us of our power and hopefully change our perspective after I talk about this. This is directly from the Nielsen Report Latina 2.0. 52% of Latina women agree that their goal is to make it to the top of their profession. 67% agree that they would continue working even if they won the lottery. These attitudes, increasing education levels, and increasing numbers of Hispanic women entering the workforce are creating a boom of Latina entrepreneurship. According to the last census data available, there were just under 1.5 million Hispanic female majority-owned firms in the U.S., with 78 0.7 billion in sales. Latina majority owned firms make up 44% of all Hispanic owned firms. 44%! Hispanic female majority owned firms grew in number by more than 87%. 
during the last five-year period tracked by the U.S. Census. Latinos overall outpaced the U.S. population as a whole for new business creation as the total number of female-majority-owned firms grew only 27% during the same period. Furthermore, sales of Hispanic-majority-owned firms grew 41% during the period, while sales of all female-majority-owned U.S. firms grew by 19%. I know these are a lot of numbers, and let me just sum up what it is saying. It is basically saying that Latinas are outpacing any other group in entrepreneurship and creating new businesses and creating new jobs. For Latina-owned businesses, they're growing 41% in sales, while white women businesses are growing 14% in sales, okay? 41% versus 14. And then the number of firms that are growing is 87% for Latinas. 87% while white female-owned firms are growing by only 13%. This is where we fight power with power, but we have to take it a step further. It doesn't end here. There's a problem in this report. This report also lets us know that Latinas are higher consumer than any other female group. This is a really big problem. Before, I used to like show the brands like, yo, you need to be advertising with us. You need to be spending money with us because this is how much we consume. And now that I'm submerging myself into financial literacy, I'm understanding that this is a really big problem. Not only because this is what's going to keep us from building generational wealth, but we are now teaching our children that consumerism is what you work for. Instead of having your money work for you, you work to have all of these things, these material things things. And what's going to happen is that while we might be peaking in entrepreneurship, we're going to see a downfall in our children's generation. And we don't want that. So I'm going to say this again. There is nothing more important than you begin to ingest content to help you understand money. I want to share with you two books that I think are really great. One of them is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I read that book a really long time ago because I heard it was a great book. It was a must read, but I really didn't process it. My mind just was not there. So if you've read this book before, I would like to invite you to purchase the updated copy, which is a 20 year anniversary copy that was released a couple of years ago that has updated information of what is taking place now. I personally ingested the book via Audible because it helps me be efficient in doing everything else I need to do and still consuming the knowledge. I do want to warn you right now that this book can be extremely triggering. I found out via this edition that the writer is a Trump supporter. I want to invite you to not fall into a mistake of not getting the book because he is a Trump supporter and instead change your perspective and get the book because he is a Trump supporter. And what I mean by this is that there is so much genius financial information that can help propel you into wealth. I received the inspiration from my intuition to really look at financial literacy as fighting power with power before I learned that he was a Trump supporter. And I feel like it was important for me to receive that download from my intuitive voice prior because I'm almost certain that I would have shut down had I learned he was a Trump supporter. I want to give you that warning because I want you to enter the book clear-minded and being able to extract everything you can extract from the book that will help you grow. His way of explaining financial literacy is so digestible. Not only that, but he gives you enough for you to take your own path on subjects that you might be called to learn more about. He's also a little bit more of a risk taker, which I kind of aligned with, so I 
loved that aspect of his teaching. The second book I want to recommend is The Millionaire Next Door. The Millionaire Next Door is a book that is a bit sleepy, meaning it's not as entertaining as Rich Dad, Poor Dad, so it's a little hard to get through, but trust me, you want to get through it. So I want to recommend those two books and as I continue to read and as I continue to ingest, I will definitely be sharing all of the tools with you. I just thought that this is a strong political act even though it doesn't feel like it in the same way that I feel like spirituality and healing is a strong political act. Once you start ingesting financial literacy, you'll begin to see clearer and clearer why this is one of the most important political acts we can mobilize on right next to spirituality and healing. On this podcast, I really try and create a space where we attack our egoic selves, where we are constantly focusing on working on ourselves. I try not to focus so much on what is taking place outside of us because I feel like that is our own personal individual responsibility to pay attention to what's going on in the media, but being very careful of how much you're ingesting and how it's triggering your emotions, leading you back to healing, leading you back to self-care. But there is nothing more important than mobilizing and we will not be able to mobilize effectively and efficiently if we're not aware of everything that is taking place. So there is definitely a balance. I definitely do not think that consuming news all day, constantly ingesting tragedies, I don't think that is healthy. I do think we personally have to take responsibility of what we are consuming. So you can't like blame other people on content that's being pushed out You have to actually be responsible and parent yourself on what you are consuming, but also not turning a blind eye or spiritually bypass important situations that can move us into action via our anger. That's what I have for this week's episode. For me, fighting power with power is financial literacy. Also, don't forget to sign up for Sean King's program, How We Flip the Center it, which I think is an obvious key on how we change what is currently taking place. But the long-term key, the key that I want us to be really strong in, I'll say it again and again and again, is financial literacy. Finding financial freedom and not being dependent on the system, not being a slave to the material things that you are consuming. It's time for us to boss up. It's time for us to grow bags and get bags. That's all I have for you this week. I do want to remind you about my Patreon community. This is another way of investing in ourselves, investing in tools that can help expand our mind. I am going deeper into financial literacy on Patreon. You also get all the behind the scenes as well as digital circles, digital gathering with other like-minded people to help push us into expansion. Patreon is only $8 a month for quality content. This week on Patreon, I'm doing a full moon digital circle where our theme is courage. It is also dedicated to Griselda Flores. We're going to alchemize the anger, the fear that we have within ourselves and transform that into energy that is going to help carry us forward and mobilize us into our next steps on healing humanity. My name is Vilma Duarte. I've been part of the Patreon since its inception. A great deal of care and intention goes into each workshop, moon ritual, and Q&A. The extended content is an added perk that I absolutely love. Be part of our soul cluster so the light within us grows stronger. I love you all so much. May the light within grow stronger. Return to the one.